Welcome back Troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. We've got a fun, exciting, interstellar unboxing episode today. We're just doing a whole bunch of crazy stuff, so let's go ahead and uh, start in on this one. Something that was just recently announced by Fender's uh, little baby company, Squire. <laughs> So that tells you it's one of the things from the Paranormal series. And I am happy to announce that I did get a hold of Fender. We are going to do another one of the giveaways of one of these. And that's for the baritone version. So that'll be fun to do. But this is a different one that I had purchased from Melody Music Shop. They were the first one that I could see that had these things listed. So I went ahead and picked up a couple of them from them. And this is the first one that just kind of came in stock. They definitely did a great job packing. Ooh, and I get a goodie bag. <laughs> this is why I like the Melody Music Shop. They just seem to be kind of a, a slightly more small town home store, but yet they still get some good stuff. Let's see what they gave me this time. Another one of their t-shirts here. That's always good to have. Ooh, and a polish cloth. You know, I think I actually used the other ones that they gave me. I like to have these in my workshop. So thank you, Melody Music Shop. And they sell things on Reverb too, if you want to check them out. In fact, that's how I first found them was through Reverb. But let's go ahead and open up this new paranormal activity thing. <laughs> Man, they packed this like they knew it was going to be unboxed for 100,000 people. <laughs> Cool. To be honest, I think this is the first time I've ever had a Squire, at least for on the show. First impressions. I, I don't know what I was thinking. I wasn't expecting a gloss finish. That actually looks pretty nice. Because the more and more of these that I saw show up on Reverb, the more I was like, oh, do I really want to review these? Because they kind of looked cheap. But in person, this is looking good. Okay, now that I think about it, I did that Squire Baritone Jazz Master. That was a great guitar. So it is not the first Squire. I've got to say, this one, it's actually feeling pretty good at first glance here. So this is the new Offset Telecaster. I've actually done the uh, Fender USA version of this before. Somebody had brought that by. So since that one was a mocha, I decided to go for the surf green vibe because, you know, it's just kind of an interesting guitar. So we'll check this out probably in a week or two, just whenever I feel like it because it's basically just a telecaster mixed up with the jazz master whoa i told you guys we were going on an interstellar trip today where did all my packages go Oh, it must be time for the sponsored segment of today's episode. Okay, so today's episode is sponsored by Singular Sound. They had reached out to me and said, hey, we had this really great product that we debuted at NAMM this year, and people really like it, and we want you to help us spread the word about these really cool products. So I said, hey, sure, let's go ahead and check it out. So what have they sent me? Looks like we get the ultimate drummer in a pedal called the Beat Buddy. Now, just by going off the title here, what do I think this is? It's probably like a drum beat sample that you can have within your pedal board. So that's great if you're like a one man band type thing or you're just trying to jam on your own and you like having something physical. What else is this? This looks like a foot switch that probably goes to this, I would guess. This button right here does accent hits, so. That could be any sound you like. It could be a kick drum, it could be a hand clap, it could be a cowbell, because you can never have enough cowbell. And this button right here does pause and unpause. You can do drum breaks, or you could do a pause and bring it in with a fill. So you have different options when you play live. And this is the Eros Loop Studio. Wow, that's pretty fancy. They definitely uh, took some time to design these boxes. That's nice. Oh, nice quick start guide. So basically what this is and why people are liking it is you can have six different individual tracks. So it's kind of like you're within Logic Pro, but this is all within like your soundboard, pedal board stuff going on here. That's nice, on off switch. 
wonder how you power this thing. It looks like we have a power supply here. This is actually, you know, fairly lightweight. I do have a different looper pedal, but I always found it a little bit difficult to use. So I will definitely have to try this guy out. So here we go, everything you need to be a one-man band creative. So thank you Singular Sound for sponsoring today's episode. If you're interested in winning one of these, I believe it's your choice. All you have to do is follow the rules in the description. Moving on here, let's open up this tiny little one. It's the, this is something that somebody had sent me. They messaged me and said, hey, I've got something that's going to make your life a lot easier. So let's find out what that might be. His message says, a gift for your reviews. So thanks, Dustin. We'll figure out what this thing is. So he said this is going to help me measure scale length. U.S. Tape Company Pro Tape. Oh, okay. I see what's going on. So this has special markings for the center point. So in order to measure scale length, you're supposed to go from the nut to the 12th fret. But the reason why I always take it at the bridge for the reviews and demos is because it's a lot easier for the viewers just to visualize that number right there instead of having to do math when sometimes it's like in between. So what we got going on here is I can show you the 12th fret and then it automatically doubles it down here. So that's going to help you guys see the scale length and teach people the correct way of how to measure scale length. So thank you, man. I can definitely get some use out of this. Now we get into the good stuff. We'll save these guys for last because that's like the main feature of today's episode. But this one, oh man. So this is a limited edition model that just escaped me. Even if you were trying to find one of these within the United States, you couldn't. I actually had somebody commission a new Guitar Day purchase of one from Japan because we could only find these things internationally. So about a month after we do that, that one's waiting to ship because if you don't know, things can't actually leave Japan right now because EMS has like stopped all flights into the US. So that's just kind of sitting there waiting to be shipped. Uh, luckily, I kind of might have a workaround for that in the works. That's why it's so useful having my YouTube channel. I've got connections all over the world. But this one, it just happened to show up on Reverb and I was like, oh my goodness, that's the first one I've seen show up in the United States. So I quickly worked a deal for this one, mainly because I figure once I make that video, somebody's gonna say, hey, I want one of those too. Can you find me one? So I thought I would hold this one back. But what's kind of scary about this is this box got badly beaten over here. Now I'm guessing it's just because there's a lot of dead space right here. So hopefully the guitar itself is just fine. That's kind of the problem with using packing peanuts is it does leave some dead spots, which can scare the buyers. Ooh, take a look at this case. It is special, 125. I'm excited to open this, wow. You know, this reminds me of the Gibson Artist series cases back from the 70s. And it almost seems uh, larger than a regular case as well. But inside here is a very special limited edition model. And apparently they just all went overseas. <laughs> but this was one of the USA releases. Ah. Oh. This is a Les Paul Supreme 125th anniversary. Let's take a look at this beauty. So I have not 
to my knowledge, ever had a Les Paul Supreme. I played one at a Guitar Center once, and I just was not impressed with it for the price point. But that was before, you know, I knew a lot about electric guitars. I'm not sure if that was the point when I had my Les Paul Custom or not yet. I think it was because my thing was I did not want to touch a Gibson until I could afford one. And I lived by that rule and we were okay. So I don't want to spoil too much about this one. This review and demo will probably take a little bit longer to do because I'm waiting for the one from Japan to come in. But these all have very interesting tops to them. And, and you'll notice uh, no back plates. The way that they do these guys is they fish them in through the side right there. But yeah, just kind of a cool limited edition model that I think people will enjoy getting to learn about. And then there were two. I did not open this one. This actually arrived like this. And it's the reason why I'm not a big fan of these staples, uh, other than they like to scratch me a lot too. <laughs> I always thought these were pretty secure though, but I guess if something drops hard enough, they could potentially let go. So hopefully whatever is inside here is okay. Because that's a big case, rectangular. So that could potentially mean, what, an explorer? I guess some flying V's can come in a case like that. But what do we have here? Huh, is, is there a brand on this anywhere? I don't see one. It's got a nice black Tolex exterior. I guess it kind of looks like a fender case, but the latches are slightly different. The handle, not quite as good as what Fender puts on theirs, I would say. What is inside here? <gasps> Where's my guitar? Where's the branding on this case? All right, it looks like this is made in Costa Rica. It almost kind of looks like a, a Gibson Modern Double Cut. That is the largest silica packet I've ever seen. That's peculiar that there's not a brand on this anywhere. I think this can only mean one thing. This is a four shadow unboxing for what is in this. That's right, this is the box that has something really special in it and is the title of today's episode. I paid a scalper for this guitar. I was so upset I missed out on these from Nam. As soon as they talked about them, that very first day, I went to my musician's friend rep and I said, okay, I want one of those. But that was when we were kind of still first working together. So we were kind of working out what my rates would be on guitars. And by the time that all got settled, I was the first one to be denied this new model and it made me so upset. And then especially when I started to see the prices go woo through the roof, scalper city on this guy. But it's simply because everybody wants this new finish for this model that kind of shook things up. And I've always wanted to try this model out. And this was the first finish that really stood out to me besides that green one. But I knew deep down inside, this is the only one I wanted. Oh, it can't be that special if it comes in a gig bag. Jeez. <laughs> it's something by PRS. Now, I get a lot of people that say, hey, can you do some PRS guitars? It's not that I don't like PRS guitars. I actually have mad respect for Paul. He is such a brilliant man, and I love the fact that he's still alive to tell the story of his company. You can actually watch their YouTube channel. They have like going through the vaults, they're buying back their original things, they tell you the stories behind them. I'd love stuff like that. I've had a few PRS guitars. They're not necessarily my favorite thing, but something like this, I like. This is the PRS Silver Sky in that ever so coveted nebula finish. Wow. Okay, I can see why people are freaking out over this thing. So this was a limited edition run done in this like purple to bluish finish. They made 500 of them and they sold out like instantly. And when I say instantly, I'm talking within 24 hours of these things being posted on YouTube for NAM footage, they were gone. 
<laughs> I was like, oh, why is this one like a little bit more expensive than the regular finishes? But I ended up regretting that and I had to pay a lot more for this example. But hey, at least this one's got a figured neck even. That's cool. It's kind of got a, a weird stripe thing going on here, almost like it's a, a scarf joint. Is that really how that is? Interesting. That might be something I don't know about PRS guitars. But yes, we will see a Silver Sky Nebula. I'm basically going to be reacting to the Silver Sky in general because I never got to touch one of these. It's John Mayer's signature Stratocaster through PRS. It's a controversial model, but it's a really cool finish and it deserved to be documented no matter what the price. And apparently John Mayer liked the gig bag. I. I don't. I think for a guitar that costs, you know, three grand at the stores before inflation and stuff, it should have came with a hard shell case. But, you know, that was apparently John's specs. So let's go ahead and switch over to some boxing now. If you're wondering how I could afford all these other expensive guitars, well, this boxing segment might answer those questions. I uh, sold the lefty Tony Iommi SG. So I can finally say, yes, it was a great idea to buy the whole set. It was a worthwhile video. Didn't quite get as many views as I was hoping for, but I will forever remember the time when I had both the lefty and the righty Tony Iommi. But that is the end of this tale. The monkey SGs have all been spoken for. If I'm understanding correctly, this one's actually going to a recording studio. So that's kind of cool. I'm, I'm not sure if it'll be like a decorative prop or if somebody's actually going to use this for recording, but that's pretty interesting. Next up here is a guitar that, you know, I was surprised just how many people were interested in this thing. So I unboxed it and I said I would leave the review and demo up to the buyer. Unfortunately, this guy, he just wanted it. But this is that blue R7. It was kind of cool, but there were literally five offers, like not that far off my asking price as soon as I listed this thing. Now, normally I just accept the highest of them and I don't play them off against each other. But, you know, it was kind of the heat of the moment thing. It's like <laughs> they're all within a couple hundred bucks of each other. Other, and then they just all back out. So I was like, oh, okay, maybe I played them a little bit too hard. But it ended up selling about a month later. So no harm, no foul here. Basically, it's just an R7, but instead of being a gold top, it's got the cool blue color. Not much more to say about it other than that. And our next one to pack up here is the Epiphone Firebird. I can't wait for these things to be more readily available for people because I really think this is a great value within the Epiphone lineup, if you're looking for an Epiphone Firebird anyways. I mean, we had a few cosmetic issues with this one, right? But it did turn out to be a true neck through design. So I feel, you know, 600 bucks, that's pretty fair for this, considering the only thing that makes it look different from the Gibson iteration is pretty much the headstock. But let's go ahead and get this off to its new Guitar Day owner. The last one to say goodbye to today. This. <laughs> this was a fun episode. Um, the Slash Les Paul Gold Top. You know, I thought $4,000 was far enough out there that it would scare away most buyers, but not like too crazy. Like, what is this guy on? But I'm starting to think, yeah, maybe I should have priced it higher. Because <laughs> as soon as it's sold, there's just a huge influx of people. I want that guitar. How much? What's your best price? Blah, 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 blah. But you know, it's sold, I think within 20 minutes of it being posted. But you know, it was a great guitar. Eventually, we will see these in the stores. I'm recording this segment about three hours after it's gone live. Apparently, Slash actually posted a photo of one of these back in April. So this was likely a pre-production run, like some were sent to him. Maybe these were sent out to a few dealers to like take the photos so they would have the listings. Now, why it got sold, I, I don't know. That's a little bit fishy yet, but this is still a pre-production run of a gold top slash Les Paul standard. So if you missed that video, you can check it out here, but it's time to get this one packed up and off to its new home to a great big slash fan.
Thank you, Troglodytes, for tuning into today's unboxing and boxing episode. Don't forget to visit Singular Sound's website to learn all about their products as well as purchase them and follow the rules in the description to potentially win one. Take care.